and you thought that Samsung's devices couldn't get any more customized, well, Samsung has an app called GoodLock that you wanna check out. It'll take it even deeper, and I'm gonna show you how to use it next. Hands on Android is brought to you from LastPass Studios. You're focused on security, but are your employees? LastPass can ensure that they are by making access and authentication seamless, whether employees are working in the office or remotely. Visit lastpass.com slash twit to learn more. This is Twit. Hello, welcome to Hands on Android. I'm Jason Howell, and today on the show, I thought I'd focus a little bit on Samsung customization because anyone who's had a Samsung device probably already knows that Samsung really likes to put customization into the core of their Android devices. They've really, over the years, focused on bringing extra features to the Android platform, sometimes with the effect of slowing things down, but often bringing just amazing capabilities to the device that later end up being adopted by Google itself inside of Android. And some people love that flexibility. Some people feel like it gets in the way of their experience. Everybody kind of sits in a different place on this. But if you like the flexibility and you like the ability to customize your Samsung device, then you need to know about Samsung GoodLock. This is an app that launched back in 2016, and it truly is all about taking customization of these devices to the next level. It's a tweaker's paradise as far as devices are concerned. Uh, deep customization of the lock screen, notifications, uh, clock faces, uh, navigation bar, everything that you can think of almost that are the components that make up a solid Android device uh, are broken out into pieces that can be customized further thanks to Samsung GoodLock. So I'm actually going to take the next two episodes to focus on it. There's so much in there that it's going to require two episodes. And so today we're going to start uh, a little bit at the beginning of GoodLock. When you first open the app, what do you see? And where does it take you? Because they really do section it in two different places. There's local and then there's system wide. So first, the app itself. You can only find it in the Samsung Galaxy Store. So you're going to want to install it from there. You're not going to find it in the Play Store. And once you launch it, you'll see that we're presented with a number of different modules on the screen, right? Each module here uh, must be individually installed before use. So of course that means that you do not have to install everything that's here. Maybe you have no intentions of changing the navigation bar or you don't need you know, any of these other customizations to the lock screen, it's really up to you. Now down at the bottom is the unit tab. That's what we're looking at right now. And you can think of this more as like a container of modules that affect a single unit on the device, hence unit. So for instance, the lock screen or the notification system. Now the other tab next to that is called family. These are the modules that are a bit more holistic in approach. So think device theming, right? Uh, or managing the sound behaviors on your device, that sort of stuff. So this week, I'm going to focus on units. Next week, we're going to take a look at what's in the family. But let's start with units right now. We'll start with Quickstar. This is a module that actually affects the quick settings panel that you get when you swipe down twice from the top. Now, without any changes, you can see that Samsung already offers an abundant assortment of toggles for modes and functions on the device. This isn't really about adding more functionality to that. Into Quickstar here, we see that we can jump into panel settings and change the look and the feel and the interactivity of it. This is where you can get in there and play around with your favorite color combinations. You just tap the plus button and pick a baseline color. And this is basically what you want to build your quick settings theme around. And then from there, you get to customize all aspects of the layout. Even uh, the fade option that's down below, this actually makes the screen content underneath the quick settings shade fade out or no fade whatsoever if that's what you prefer. It can be a lot of work definitely when you're talking about customization to this level of detail, but you can always just select one of the preset options that's listed here and uh, just go with that. Or you can tap and hold any of those presets and it makes it editable from that point. So they really do make it easy for you. The indicator settings section is all about controlling um, the items that would appear in your notification bar up top and throughout. Indicator icons for things like wireless connection, uh, an alarm if it's set, Bluetooth connection, that sort of stuff. Here you can determine which of these indicators is allowed to take up space in the view throughout your phone. And if you don't care about some of these, 
feel free to remove them and you'll free up some visual space. And this also goes into uh, the clock that displays up there. You can change the position from left to right to missing altogether if time is no issue to you. And if that's the case, I envy you. And finally, notification pop-up window. Uh, this adds a button to every notification, which is kind of interesting. When you hit that button, it will take the app that that notification came from and open that app in a pop-out window. So you can jump right to that app in a pop-out window, close it, and move on. Kind of a great way to get in, do what you need, and get out. Next up is Task Changer. Now, this is a section that gives you control over the multitask switcher. And to give you a sense of this, here's what it looks like by default without this running. Narrow vertical cards that swipe left to right. It actually looks fine to my eyes, but jumping back into good lock, I'm gonna go ahead and activate Task Changer now. And the immediate effect is found in layout type. This is where all the different variety of presentations are listed from grid view, of course, to a vertical stack, to my personal favorite, the first option, which is stack view. Now, overall, I feel like what you see here is just a bit more dynamic than the default option, or maybe it's just different, but it's nice to have the option. Now, below layout type, there's a few additional options, including blurring the background, and I actually really like this mini mode that shrinks the cards a bit to make it all easier for one-handed operation. Plenty to play around with. All right, now clock face. Here we have control over two clock related aspects of the device. There's the always on display that has a clock that appears when the phone is locked and unused as the ambient display. And in this section, I can either select a number of clock themes that are stored on the device by default, um, as well as a solid selection to choose from there, or I can tap the paintbrush which actually takes me over to the Galaxy Store. And there, you know, uh, different designers, developers have created their own clock themes uh, for the always on display that you can download some for free, some for paid. And you go ahead and download that, apply it, and it appears on your lock screen like these fireworks do and brings a little extra life uh, to your always on display. Now, the other aspect of clock face is the lock screen clock. That is, when the display is fully awake, what clock is shown on the lock screen? Now, swiping that row of thumbnails down there at the bottom shows a number of options that are layered on top of the currently set lock screen image. So they're separate, right? You've got the image that you can change. You've also got this clock over the top of it. And it's really easy to kind of preview the different clocks on top of that, as well as changing the color. You can switch the color and get an instant preview to see what it looks like. Next up is Multistar. Multistar actually has some pretty powerful features if you happen to be on a foldable like I am with a Galaxy Z Fold 2 right here. Uh, you want to look for the section that's called iHeart Galaxy Foldable. Uh, makes a lot of sense. This addresses some of the phone's default behaviors and forces some pretty cool stuff. First, by default, I'll show you the Instagram app on my phone doesn't scale properly to the internal display. It kind of, it's set up for the phone aspect ratio and not the wider view that's more like a tablet size. Um, so what you can do here is you can set aspect ratio for each app, jump into Instagram and change it so that it fits to full screen. And suddenly now when I launch Instagram, it looks perfect when the device is unfolded. It fills the entire space. Nothing looks out of order. This is the way it should look. Also, by default, only certain apps like YouTube is one example are able to continue over to the front screen if you happen to be looking at it first in the foldable screen and then you fold your phone. It's a setting in the default settings on Samsung's Z Fold 2. In the iHeart Galaxy foldable section in Good Lock, you can turn on that feature that allows for every app on your device to get the royal treatment, which isn't bad. You might encounter some apps that don't do this properly though, so your mileage may vary. And beyond that, Multistar offers uh, ways to supercharge multiple windows by allowing all apps on the device to do split screen and pop up windows. That's nice. And this one's really great. Multi window screen zoom. So I'll show you without it first. Multi windows show content as you can see here on both sides, but the font size is just kind of like the default font size for the app. It doesn't take into consideration that it's shrinking things down into a smaller window. With this multi window screen zoom function activated, now content in 
the apps zoom out, making everything inside just a little smaller, which means everything is more information dense and it actually fits the display just a little bit better. It gives you a little bit more information there. All right, moving on to Navstar. Navstar, I'd say, is pretty basic. It's all everything to do with the navigation buttons down at the bottom, which means if you're running gesture navigation, this is something that's not going to do anything for you. But if you happen to be running your device with navigation buttons, you can play around with this. And really, it's just an easy way to swap out those default arrows, squircles, and lines that we're all used to seeing down there on Samsung devices with other types of symbols and combinations. And yes, there is one combination that is a pizza, milk, and cheese. Sure. Okay. If that's your jam, go for it. All right. Next up is Home Up. And this offers a number of handy tweaks uh, for your home screen. Uh, I would say a lot of it's pretty subtle, but you can get in there and play around with it. For example, tweaking the blur level of the background when you're looking at the app tray, which is very subtle. You have to really kind of look for it to see what it's doing. Um, or hiding app icons in the app tray to clean things up. There's just a couple of options you can do. Folder options actually give serious control to the look and feel of file folders on the home screen and how the contents inside appear within them. And then there is a section for some automated backup and restore features to keep your home screen customization resilient if you want to back up your layout and restore it later. So that's nice to have. And finally, Notice Star. This focuses on the notifications that appear on the lock screen. Now, this can be a little confusing uh, on the lock screen only because you have the phone's default notifications section and then the notice star notifications uh, kind of sharing the same space. You swipe up on that little symbol and it pulls up your notice star notifications. But nonetheless, it's a comprehensive list of all of your notifications that you've received. And here I have it set for 30 days, so it's quite a few, uh, showing in many cases the entire contents of the notification where the default system simply shows you a couple of lines. This shows you everything. So that can be kind of nice. You can hide apps from hitting the notice star column. And you can also add a filter category that views only notifications that match a certain combination of keywords or whatever. And you can just kind of switch to this and check your notifications quickly for notifications about the White House as one example. Think of notice star as notification triage with a little extra power and flexibility. All right, so that was only half of Samsung Good Lock. Yeah, there's a lot in there. And next week, we're going to focus on the family side of things, which, like I said, more holistic view over the device, more holistic control, and uh, definitely a lot to play around with there. So we're going to focus on that. Then, in the meantime, if you have any questions, HOA at twit.tv, and I will get your email, and I do appreciate that. Also, you can subscribe to the show at twit.tv slash HOA. All the podcatchers are listed there, as well as YouTube. You can jump out to YouTube and subscribe as well. Thank you so much to John Ashley for editing this episode and every episode of Hands on Android. And thanks to you for watching and listening. We'll see you next week on another episode of Hands on Android. Bye, everybody. Want more Twit? Well, check out Smart Tech Today. It's at twit.tv slash STT. It's the show where Matthew Casanelli and I cover everything there is to know about smart tech tech, it's automation, it's connected devices, it's smart home, it's all those goodies and so much more. We get the news, we get the latest devices, we do reviews, everything. You gotta check it out. Twit.tv slash STT for Smart Tech Today.